This is the first caviar produced in Africa. From the highlands of Madagascar, the company Asapenser harvests 10 tons of the expensive fish eggs a year. In 2009, French entrepreneurs took a massive gamble, building a luxury industry in one of the world's poorest countries. Tout le monde nous a s'est moqué de nous et nous a pris pour des fous. Oui. Les eaux sont tout simplement trop chaudes. Huge sturgeon farms in China and Europe dominate the market, producing most of the world's caviar. But the company's founders were determined to raise fish for their black gold in the country they had called home since the 1990s. Nous sommes à plus de 20 millions d'euros d'investissement, c'est colossal. Now their products are making their way into Michelin-starred kitchens in Europe. So how did Asapenser convince Malagasy locals on a luxury industry? And how did they get customers from around the world to take a chance on African caviar? Traditional caviar can only come from sturgeon. They're native to the Northern Hemisphere. Many of the most popular species come from the Caspian Sea, where waters can be much colder than Madagascar's. Dans les autres euh, endroits de Madagascar, les côtes de Madagascar étaient tout à fait inadaptées à l'élevage des sturgeons parce que les eaux auraient été bien trop chaudes. That's why the founders raised their fish in Lake Montesua, about 1,400 meters above sea level. The team spent months crossing thousands of miles in search of temperate waters like this. The lake rarely tops 25 degrees Celsius, and it gave this farm an advantage. While sturgeon in the Caspian Sea might grow slower during cold winters and hot summers, the company says fish here mature year-round, thanks to these moderate temperatures. Uh, Madagascar, on peut dire qu'on a trois ans d'avance sur les, les croissances, sur la performance, et trois ans d'avance aussi sur le caviar. The whole process starts in the hatchery, where they care for thousands of baby fish until they're mature enough for the lake. Sturgeon are notoriously tricky and expensive to raise. Compared to other farm fish, like salmon, sturgeon need a long time to grow. They can take a decade to mature, while a salmon only needs three years. So operating a sturgeon farm could cost five times more than a salmon one. But the team's first hurdle was keeping the fertilized sturgeon eggs alive along thousands of miles to Madagascar. They failed four times, trying to import them from France and Russia. But the fifth time was the charm. The company imported 35,000 healthy sturgeon eggs back in 2013. That's Delphine Dabazi, one of Asapenser's founders. Et même les plus grands experts nous ont tous déconseillé de nous lancer dans ce projet faux. C'est que le 26 juin 2017, le jour de la première production du premier poisson, euh, que nous nous sommes dit qu'il y avait une chance que ça fonctionne. Nearly a decade later, they've grown their fish population to over 60,000 and they raised six different species, one of which was thought to be extinct. Only female sturgeon produce caviar, so once they're big enough, the team separates them by sex. Avec l'aspect extérieur du poisson, on ne peut pas déterminer le mâle de la femelle. Donc du coup, on est obligé d'utiliser un échographe. The females head to the farm. With 16 hectares of pens, the fish have room to move. Si, comme dans tout élevage, hein, tout élevage sur densitaire euh, est voué à l'apparition d'agents pathogènes. Donc, au plus on réduit la densité, au plus on, et plus on limite ce risque. That Jérôme Bastide. He's the farm's breeding manager. Donc, au maximum, on ne va pas dépasser 25 km. They use three nets to contain the fish in the pens. One where the fish live, an extra net in case they escape and a net on top to hold back birds. Ten full-time weavers make and mend the nets on site. It takes 31 miles of rope and a month of weaving to make just one net. Asapenser has hired and trained 300 Malagasy workers. The company says it pays three times the minimum wage. <laughs> The 
Ça m'a fait à la mienne. A team heads out to feed the fish five days a week. First, crews test the water. When there's enough oxygen, they can start adding feed. That's so the food will sink to the bottom, where the sturgeon eat. The company produces about 60 tons of feed a month made from a base of fish meal and vegetable meal, like soybean or rice bran, yeast, and water. If the fish aren't fed the right thing, Jihom says they could take twice as long to grow. So, d'où l'importance d'avoir un aliment sur mesure par rapport à son espèce. Et je vais dire que ce qui coûte le plus cher dans l'exploitation, c'est la production de l'aliment du poisson. The company spends over $130,000 a month on feed alone. Asapenser makes the food on site and sources about 80% of its ingredients from farms nearby. Ça a développé toute une économie locale en fait. Il y a les paysans, il y a les épiceries. Donc ça c'est le tourteau de soja. Ça c'est local. Erimanda manages the feed mill. His team grinds all the raw materials into powder. Machines then cook and shape the feed into granules. The recipe and size of the pellets change based on the age of the fish. Plus le poisson est jeune, plus il a besoin d'énergie. Plus le poisson est jeune, plus il a besoin de protéines et, et, et de lipides. Feed is such a big expense for Asapenser because the fish eat so much of it. De 4. Donc ça veut dire que la femelle a besoin de 4 kg de granulés pour produire 1 kg de poisson. Indu, ma reine, et après ma fille, Amourou. While the sturgeon feed, there's always a diver watching below the surface to see how quickly the fish eat and how deep they go. Every few months, Jihom's team pulls fish out of the water. He checks for roe in the sturgeon, using this ultrasound machine. These fish were born in 2017. Et tous les points noir et blanc, ce sont du caviar. He measures the roe to help determine which fish need more time to develop their eggs. They isolate the fish that need a few more years to mature. These females are Persian sturgeon. They'll spend the last few weeks of their lives in cold pools. Qui va permettre en fait d'arrêter le métabolisme de la femelle et d'avoir une très bonne qualité des œufs. Cette étape elle est très importante parce que c'est l'étape qui va nous permettre these species can be harvested young, at only seven years old. This sturgeon weighs 16 kilos, but they can go up to 20. The valuable row makes up about a fourth of its body weight. Mandim Bin Salama worked as a cook before joining Asapenser. 
Det var nogle af de skudder, der gør, men der var bare ikke en del af det. Det er bare sådan, at jeg har en del af det. Jeg har en del af det, og jeg har en del af det, og jeg har en del af det. But the row isn't finished caviar just yet. Workers run the eggs over a sieve to separate them from the fish's innards. Then they wash the eggs to remove any leftover bits. These workers spread the row out so they can see any misshapen or discolored eggs that need to be removed. Now they race against the clock to salt the row in a minute. Pourquoi 60 secondes? Parce que si on le fait plus, ça risque de ramollir les œufs. Any less time, and the eggs won't have a consistent salty taste. The salt, along with four months of aging in these fridges, helps develop the caviar's nutty flavor. A kilo of Rova caviar can go for over $5,000. The cost is on par with European brands. Asapenser exports 90% of its caviar to Europe, but it's up against stiff competition. China is Europe's biggest supplier. It raises sturgeon on massive farms like this one. 3,500 times larger than Asapensers. Since 2014, China has been selling the most expensive caviar, the kind harvested from beluga sturgeons, seen here at a farm in Florida. But Asapenser is still years away from harvesting its first beluga row, because it takes nearly double the amount of time to raise the high-priced fish compared to other sturgeon species. On ne sait pas encore combien on va produire en vitesse de croisière. La vitesse de croisière, ce sera à partir de 2026, 2027 ou 2028, quand nos belugas commenceront à bien produire le caviar. Until then, Asapenser is trying to sell the caviar types that are ready. The company has opened offices in Paris, Brussels and New York City in hopes of hooking Western markets on African caviar. The team has already managed to convince chefs at some of Europe's top restaurants. Boris Campagnella is the executive chef of Le Crine, a Michelin-starred restaurant. He was one of the first chefs in Paris to put Rova on the menu, back in 2019. C'est-à-dire Elle m'a présenté un caviar, déjà elle a ouvert la boîte. Je dis pas grand chose, je goûte. Le produit incroyable, un goût, une teneur en bouche, la dureté des œufs, enfin la couleur, enfin tout. Je dis mais comment vous faites pour faire un truc pareil He's top dishes of torch shrimp, lamb tartare and ceviche with rova caviar. J'aime mettre un plat dans le menu avec du caviar. Like this dish of abalone with brown butter. Ça c'est la grosse aigle de mer. Mais on l'annonce à chaque fois qu'on arrive à la table, on l'annonce caviar de Madagascar. Donc forcément, ça, ça interpelle. Ah, qu'est-ce que vous avez dit, chef Caviar d'Oug Je connais pas, il faut du caviar Madagascar, mais incroyable. And Boris isn't the only chef who stocked these tins. About 15 restaurants across Europe now serve Rova. The company's success abroad has allowed it to invest back into Madagascar. Asapenser started by training locals, like Tafita Soa Eriarivoni, and Menchka. Au départ, on avait beaucoup d'expatriés du monde entier. Et à aujourd'hui, petit à petit, ce sont les malgaches qui ont remplacé les expatriés. 
satria mponina avy ao Matasoa izay tsy nalalininina momba ny estrujon no niakatra lasa cadre dia tena faly be mitsy The company provides rent-free housing for its workers. The housing site also has a grocery store, a mini theater, and a gym. That includes three meals a day. Most of the employees' food is grown on site. The idea is to take Madagascar to the top and to get out of his poverty a little bit. Et je trouve que plus on fera des produits de luxe à Madagascar, plus on aidera le pays à se développer.